Today we're in Malibu Creek State Park visiting the filming locations to Toby Hooper's 1986 movie, Invaders from Mars, which basically is a remake of a 1953 movie called Invaders from Mars. Just up this street, over the hill, is the house where David Gardner lived with his family, the little boy. And right behind those trees, technically, in the movie, is the hillside that went up to the sand pit where people would go up and get taken over by aliens. If you've seen the movie Invaders from Mars, you're in for a treat. If you haven't, hopefully this is going to convince you to watch it because it's a great movie. I'm only hoping, fingers and bones crossed, that by the end of this filming location video heading back home to Jessica, I don't have a needle mark on the back of my neck. With that being said, Invaders from Mars. Just come my way wherever I go hard luck is dead and stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always a coming my way In order to get the best shot of the house we have to walk around to the front but as soon as you see it, you're gonna notice it immediately. There we go. And this is it. David Gardner's house from Toby Hooper's 1986 remake of the 1953 sci-fi classic invaders from Mars. Pretty much every time you see this house, this is the angle that you see it from. And that brick retaining wall in the movie was a white picket fence. In doing research for this location, I was really hoping that the hillside behind David Gardner's house was here, but it's not. In fact, they built this house as well as the hillside on a soundstage. But when you see the house, and if you look very, very closely to the right of the screen over on this side, you'll see a wooden fence. And every time they show somebody going up the hill before they you know, get taken over by the aliens, you see that fence as everybody walks up the hill. Aside from the establishing shot, pretty much every time they showed the house, it was from this side. In fact, you see that bay window right there on the bottom floor? A very creepy scene, a breakfast scene, happened towards the beginning of the movie, right on the other side of that window. What's wrong with you, sweetheart? Do you feel all right? Are you sure there wasn't anything over the hill, Dad? Nothing. It was just a bad dream. That's all. What happened to your neck? Sit down, David. after the strange encounter with his father, because he didn't know it at the time, but we did, that his father was taken over by aliens. His dad says, let me walk you to the bus. And they would have walked out that door right there and down this way towards where those two SUVs are parked. Let me walk you to the bus stop. Right, son. There is something over the hill. What? Come 
Come on. I'll show you. I just walked around this building trying to figure out the different shots that they used, and I figured it out. So, we know that the front of this building is what they used for the establishing shots. The side over here, just beyond that white SUV, was the front of the house for the gardeners. So, the only other question is, where did they film the opening scenes where David Gardner and his dad were laying out back on the picnic table benches, stargazing. And after walking around, it's back here. There's a little section. And as soon as I saw it, it all came together. Basically, that chimney that's right there. Well, that's a bright one. Whoa, a fireball. Hey, look, there's Mars. Where? Right over there, see? Oh, it's pretty close. Is that the perihelion? Only 30 million miles from Earth. Well, oh, only 30 million? Well, well, no wonder it looks so close, huh? Got it. <laughs> Smart ass. Now, this is really cool. I really thought that this was filmed on a soundstage, but it wasn't. Everything here matches up perfectly. The opening shots of the movie is an aerial shot. As the camera comes down, you see David and his dad laying on picnic benches right back here. And they're looking up at the stars and they see these two really bright meteors falling to the ground. The camera, Toby Hooper and his camera crew would have been up here filming down. You can see this, the wall. In the movie, it looks a lot smaller, but right here. And we know this because there's another scene where David's mother comes right out that door in almost this exact angle, and she says it's time for David to go to bed. It's time for bed. There's a really cool shot looking up at the sky from right about here, looking up the chimney as one of the meteors flies across the sky. That one's not gonna vaporize. It's gonna make it through the atmosphere. Wow, that's a hell of a tail. Huh? Now we know that the hillside behind the Gardner house is not real, the one that led up to the sand pits. But if we were to walk through the scene as if they were, looking at establishing shots, the hillside would have been over here because you see a glimpse of wooden, one of the wooden fences. Now, in the movie, David Gardner's room overlooks the hillside. So, with that being said, that would put David Gardner's bedroom right there on the side of the chimney because you actually see him looking out. walk over where the hillside would have been if it was actually here. I can't believe I'm walking here. I can't believe I'm actually walking up to the hillside. All right, let's take a look. All right, position myself behind the house. right up this way. So in theory, in the world of Toby Hooper's remake of Invaders from Mars, if I'd kept going up this hill, eventually my body would be taken over by aliens. Let's walk up to the crest. Absolutely nothing up here. That would have been it. Crazy, right? 
I knew even before I got here that the hillside behind the Gardner house that would have led up to the sand pits where I would have been taken over by aliens wasn't here. But still, actually walking up the hillside behind the Gardner house, it's a dream come true. I mean, if you've seen this movie and you love horror and you love sci-fi and you love the 80s, this is an 80s horror kid's dream. And I did it. I survived. Well, yeah, I don't have a mark on the back of my neck, which is a good thing. I had to stop and take a minute, heading back down the hillside behind the Gardner residence, letting it sink in where I am in cinematic history. It's kind of blowing my mind. That would have been David Gardner's room right there, overlooking the hillside that his dad, his mom, the policemen, all the people going up here. I just can't get over this. This is just too cool. Now, before we go any further, I should clarify this. In the movie, the sand pits that were at the top of the hill behind David Gardner's house, I said that they were built on a soundstage. Well, only the close-up shots were filmed there. All the extra wide shots were filmed at an old silica mine in Simi Valley. Don't know where they're at. I've been looking and I can't find an address, so that's why I'm not taking you there. Which is funny because in probably about a week or two, or down in the comments, somebody's gonna say, that old silica mine in Simi Valley is this address right here. But just so you guys know, thinking about it. The next stop on our Invaders from Mars filming locations tour brings us to the Eagle Rock neighborhood here in Los Angeles. The building that's behind me is the Eagle Rock Elementary School. All of the elementary school scenes were filmed inside this building. I'm actually a little surprised at how easy it was to find where they filmed here on property. I thought for sure the school would have changed. I mean, it was the late 80s, but it still looks the same. There is absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to get into the school, let alone on property. They actually have a chain link fence that wraps around the entire property. But standing at the fence, you can see a lot of where, where they filmed. Because everything's locked up, I think this is the best that we can do in lining up shots, but that's okay because we can work with this. Now there's a scene where David Gardner comes running around this portion of the building, right over around here, and you see this door in it, these windows, and there's a couple cars parked right here. And written on this wall, you're gonna see, it says, I think it says W.C. Menzies Elementary School, which is a throwback to the original 1953 invaders from mars the director of that movie his last name was menzies this movie is filled with different nods to that now what's really interesting about this portion of the building and i want to draw your attention to the door more specifically this round portion of it up there that's now behind a grate you can see this door a lot in different hallway scenes in the movie in the background With that being said, walking through the school, mind-wise, the classroom where uh, Louise Fletcher eats the frog would have been right behind that wall right there. Even though a lot of the school still looks the same, a lot of it has definitely changed. For instance, where I'm standing right now is where the parking lot would have been, where David gets inside Louise Fletcher's character's red van to hide from her and the little girl from tracking him down. It's an interesting scene, but it all happened right here at the Eagle Rock Elementary School.
He's still with the nurse. His parents will take him. When it comes to filming locations for this movie, there's really not much that you can visit. There's two, however, and they're pretty big ones. David Gardner's house, as well as the Eagle Rock Elementary School. Well, Menzies Elementary School. With that being said, thank you for joining us on another adventure, this time to the filming locations of Toby Hooper's 1986 Invaders from Mars. And as always, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. His daddy stay. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way.